Here we go again, dear hearts. Greetings, how are you? Yeah, Miss D's here with a cigarette in her hand. The last time you saw me with a cigarette in my hand was a report about a hospital and how bad they was doing Stacy. Well, got a cigarette in my hand today about how bad they're doing Miss D. Well, how life is trying to do Miss D. I've been reporting and giving updates on how it's been going weekly by weekly. Well, this week, the report is ugly. First things first. Remember how I went to the doctor and we did a dance about me being out of the diabetic range? And then the next thing I showed you, I was doing uh, how to do a uh, wound care treatment. Had an ulcer on my foot from a blister and doing wound care. At probably by the end of this video, I'll be doing that again. But out of the diabetic range, dealing with a diabetic sore. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Hit medical bills, um, co-pays in the mail all week long because I've been going back and forth. That's one of the reasons I don't like going to the doctor. Once you start, they don't let you loose. There's always something. So I get a call at work this week and it's from the doctor's nurse. So they had me do one of those little funky tests where you uh, take the little packet home and you do a stool sample and you send it through the mail. Yeah, they tried several times to have me do that and I just couldn't get with it. But the doctor, you know, this time convinced me. I send it back. So Friday at work, I get this phone call from her nurse sounding very, very uh, excited, talking really fast telling me the test came back positive. So with a positive stool test, that means you could be looking at uh, cancer of some form. Um, I need to go come in now and go to another department and do another test. Oh, she made it sound so urgent. And of course, she's talking fast. I'm not gathering the information. First thing she tells me is the test comes back positive. So I naturally get Nervous, scared, my mind starts racing. Hmm. So, you know, she's telling me I got to call this department, get these um, tests done. I'm going to get dressed while I'm talking to you all. Um, me and my daughter's going out. I got to do something to get my mind off of this uh, aggravation that's going on this week. So this... I get this number from the doctor's nurse and I call this department. I can't think of the name of it, but it's one where they do tests for cancer. And they, um, I guess, go more intense than the one I just had. I don't know why that one test doesn't do any at all. And you have to keep going back. Every time I go to the doctor, I got to go back to somebody else. It's expensive and nerve-wracking. So I call that department and... I get the receptionist and I try to set up this appointment because I was scared pretty good. She commenced to telling me that I have to do a pre-test that can be a, a phone visit where I talk to the doctor on the phone or talk to somebody on the phone and they screen you for the next step for this test that I'm supposed to have to register for. She tells me that she can't give me an appointment until, oh my God, it was, this is now September. So I think she said somewhere October, November, I couldn't even get this phone test. And so I'm like, what? So that's the phone test taking two months to do that. Then to get this other test that I need to find out if I'm dying or if I have cancer takes about another two or three months. So I say to her, okay, look, that's a long time. Um, if I've got cancer, I'll be dead before I get these tests, right? <laughs> she chuckles a little bit and says, um, not every time you, you get those positive results do it mean that you have cancer. But why is it I got to spend more money to find out from a test that you guys give me uh, whether or not it's something serious? I mean, 
come on, me, it's a money mill. But, you know, I'm scared pretty good. So I decide to go ahead and make this phone appointment, which won't happen for a month or so here. Because I can't get in for that test on the phone. Doctor so busy can't call me on the phone for two months. Uh, so I did go ahead and set that up. I'm going to have that. I'll see if I can record it. But they seem to do these things about the time I'm at work, so I'm not usually recording at the job. But we'll see what happens. And then I have to wait for that, after that, to set up this other test, which puts me out to two, three months, about three months. So I'm supposed to live with three months worrying about if I have cancer. Um, the tests are positive and what to do. You know what? Healthcare in America, we're supposed to be advanced. We're supposed to have some of the best of everything, right? I know we could do better than that. Scare people up. Have them come for all these tests. Worry yourself to death for a few months. And then, who knows what I find. I'm going to put in the universe, law of attraction, let's get applying that I ain't got no cancer, that they just doing their thing, making them some more money. And I'm going to do my best to keep that as the thoughts in my head. But go through this procedure again and see what's, what's shaking. <laughs> as if that wasn't bad enough. I get, uh, I'm home yesterday just trying to chill and relax, painting a little bit, you know, trying to keep my mind off of that kind of stuff. And an alert goes by my screen on the computer about an email from the management of the place where I live. I'm uh, renting this townhouse, have been here for seven years and it has not been the best experience. The management office, every other two, three uh, rent cycles sends a three-day notice. Not a 20-day, not a 30-day, a three-day notice. They didn't receive the payment. I tell them I put it in the box. They go verify that and leave me alone until they're ready to do that again. Well, this time I go and I read this email from this same management person, I'm just going to call her Miss Thomas, um, and is saying that I owe them $3,000. I'm like, how the hell do I owe them $3,000? I'm paying my rent each month, doing what I'm supposed to do. Some kind of way, a year or so ago, they came up with, anytime I call to have anything fixed in here, they bill me. This is their place. I'm not buying this place. But if I call them and tell them the hot water heater is not working, they charge me. If I tell them they have these light bulbs in here, I can't even change. If I call them to tell them that I need that, they charge me $40 to change, to do a light bulb. Okay, so some kind of way after all this time I'm living here, they have me up to $3,000 I owe them for maintenance on their place. I mean, excuse me, $1,000 on maintenance on their plate. So they put me on a payment plan to, to pay that. So each month when I pay my rent, I add an extra $100 to pay them that. <sighs> Lord. So this email says that um, my August month rent didn't clear the bank. And I'm like, what? I had the rent money in the bank, knew that it would clear, and I don't understand that. So I go to, to looking at my rent, my uh, bank account online. Uh, I don't get bank statements in the mail. I do this new stuff where you um, go paperless. And so I look and I don't see a check being returned for the August rent. I see that on August 25th, they cash a check for the amount of my rent. So I'm, in my mind, like, 
you don't cash the money, what are you talking about? I don't know uh, what they're saying, but I do um, open the, uh, my bank account when you cash a check. They, I can see a picture of the check you cash um, right there online. So I look at the picture of the check they cash for August. Do you know they cashed a check for June? Now, I, as much as this woman sends me three-day notices every time uh, my rent um, payment, they don't see in seven days or eight days. In, in June, ain't nobody even told me they didn't get their money, so I'm not worried about June check. But they cash a check for June, and I'm assuming, I don't know yet. I guess I have to go to the bank and see what else they did. Um and I guess that's why she's saying I didn't pay my August because they're cashing a check for a June rent. But in the meantime, telling me I got to, they won't cash any more of my checks. I can't write a check that they see that I tried to pay my September rent. Um, they're not going to cash that check because they didn't, uh, couldn't cash the August check, which is all sounding like they don't do accounting in their office properly. I had the August money in there, so kind of where you're cashing a check from June. Three months? Who holds a check for three months from poor people? Um, what I'm, all this is about is that these people are going to now demand that I have to give them $3,000 in order to stay here. Otherwise, they're trying to say, I've got to go. $3,000. I don't have $3,000. So, I don't know, the next videos I post, maybe it's these homeless. Yeah, it's ugly. I don't like the sound of it. I don't know how to deal with it. Uh, well, I know how to deal with it, but I am frustrated. So, this rant is about systems in America and how poor people get sucked up into a cycle. You know, Washington State, Seattle has some of the highest homeless in the country. And I had read an article not long ago about um, some of these property management, especially the ones um, done by Seattle Housing or Seattle Housing Management, people that live in um, places that they manage. You know, I'm not on Section 8 or low-income housing or anything like that, but it's a property that the city kind of manages that those are becoming a lot of the people that are homeless in Seattle. And I see how, they, you know, they're doing some poor accounting on their side. They can give you bills that are high as two and three thousand dollars at a time, or you gotta get out. You know, just like the second time that they come up with some kind of way, I owe them so much money that I gotta come up with thousands of dollars at a time. Frustrating, yes. Um, I'm saying all this to say I got an issue, I got a problem that I got to get straight. I did, um, I do know that um, I'm going to find a way to give these people that money, uh, but it's going to be even more costly. And I think about regular people, everyday people um, that don't have the kind of money to come up with $3,000 at once to pay these people to keep from being homeless. I'm so mad and frustrated, you know, that I don't know how to stop this problem from happening. I have been in the process of, you know, cleaning up credit and doing all that so that I could, um, leave. I want to leave here. It's been nothing but aggravation and I'm ready to go. Um, I've been working and getting, trying to get ready to buy a house. I just was talking to the people I'm working with on that. It doesn't look like I'll be ready until December. And in the meantime, I have this issue, which probably if I don't get it straight, can mess up my credit and then take me out of the market of being able to buy a house. So I'm frustrated. 
with the whole process, the whole way we do what we do here in the country around finances and poor people. Oh, dear hearts, dear heart. I know I'm not the only person in the country that's dealing with ugliness like this. And so I wanted to, you know, I'm always keeping it real here. In keeping it real, I'm uh, just talking about financial difficulties and how we really are to deal with them. So I spent a lot of time yesterday on the internet. Um, First, just doing what I do to de-stress, looking at some acrylic painting. I even painted a, a portrait, a picture, which helped me. And while I was doing that, I was listening to some Law of Attraction videos. And, you know, I do think that we're not living on the planet the way it was designed for us, you know, that we have to have different mindsets and there's different mechanisms and ways that we can live. And law of attraction does attract me. It does um, kind of make sense to me. So what my plan is to get out of this mess is to use the law of attraction and the law of um, reality. Do what I can do to, to talk to these people, pay as much of this as I can pay and trust the universe to send me what I need to um, get out of this gym and to move on out of this place and into a different space uh, for my reality where I'm just going to buy a house and I'll manage my accounts and affairs to keep myself from being homeless and having people talking and threatening all that to me. So how the law of attraction works is you visualize what you want, you meditate with good positive energy on what you want, and you allow the universe to bring to you what it is that you desire and need. I do believe that that's about all I can do is do what I can do and trust God or the universe, which is the same, to do the rest. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll give you an update and let you know where I'm at. Thanks for letting me rant, dear heart.